Grace to you and peace from the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. For a few weeks this summer, Matthew's gospel takes us down by the sea where a huge crowd has gathered. It's so large that the only way Jesus can continue to be seen and heard is to push back from the shore in a boat. From there, he presents in rapid succession one curious story after another, inviting those listening into a place of thoughtful, imaginative reflection on the nature of life in the kingdom of heaven. He uses these stories, listen, a sower went out to sow. For the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, like yeast, like treasure hidden in a field, like a merchant in search of fine pearls, like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. All these stories and parables, including the one we have before us today, about weeds in a wheat field. It's an interesting parable to read in the midst of a global pandemic, when the weeds in our world and ourselves are so obvious everywhere. Spending a lot of time and energy trying to discover how they got there seems a lot less important than trying to figure out what to do now that they've appeared. As with all his parables, Jesus starts his story with a situation from everyday life that his audience would have recommended recognized immediately. A farmer sows good seed in the field, but at night an enemy, a rival, enters and scatters the seeds for weeds. In time, those working in the field discover the weeds and come to the landowner and point out the problem. Did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? The farmer's reply is brief. An enemy has done this. What now? What's the best way to handle the situation? The workers offer to take on the job. Their plan is to head straight out into the wheat field and to begin pulling weeds. It sounds like a reasonable approach. However, pulling weeds is rarely as straightforward as it seems. The weed Jesus is talking about is something called darnel or false wheat as it was known. It is a rye grass that looks almost identical to wheat through most of its development, but when it matures, the seed it produces is poisonous. It is risky to remove since this weed often wraps its roots around those of the grain, and hastily plucking out one might mean the end of the other. The problem with the workers' approach is also that some of the weeds that the workers pull out might be grain, and some of the wheat that they leave in might later turn out to be weeds. There is no way to easily tell until the plants are mature. The farmer tells his workers to leave the field alone, to let the wheat and the weeds grow together till the harvest. It may sound as though the farmer is favoring the weeds over the wheat, but this isn't the case. Out of an abundance of caution and in the hope that all the wheat will survive, the farmer decides that patience is the best option. It is not Jesus' intent in this parable to tell us that we are to ignore the evil in this world and do nothing about it. There's a time and a place to take action, but the point of the parable is that we are not to try to do so when it's difficult to tell whether something is evil, a weed, and contrary to the gospel, or simply a bit of wheat that we haven't recognized yet. The church has been wrong enough times in these situations of trying to determine what is wheat and what is weed that we need to exercise quite a bit of caution before we judge or uproot things that we think don't belong. I think of the church's involvement in unbelievable things over the years, like witch burning or the Crusades or the treatment of our LGBTQIA plus people, or, well, I'm sure that you can come up with a list of your own. Attempts to weed out those things that we don't belong, or that we think don't belong, can have horrible consequences for generations. Barbara Brown Taylor says in her sermon on this text, 
Sometimes it's mighty hard to tell the difference between a good plant and a bad one, especially when it can act both ways. I suppose we have all had the experience of uprooting the raspberries by mistake or protecting something interesting that turns out to be a thistle. I don't know what makes us think we are any smarter about ourselves or about the other people in our lives. We are so quick to judge as if we were sure we know the difference between wheat and weeds or good seed and bad, but that's seldom the case. Turn us loose with our machetes and there is no telling what we will chop down and what we will spare. Meaning to be good servants, we go out to do battle with weeds and end up standing in a pile of wheat, she says. Weeds and wheat. I didn't expect this parable to come to life during the global pandemic, but I did. I did see it. Think back with me for a minute to the anxiety and pace of those first few weeks of COVID-19 here in Canada. Businesses were closing, grocery shelves were emptying, and no one was sure what the future was going to hold. Some of us were fortunate enough to have employment that allowed us to work from home. But many people lost their income when their place of business or their children's schools closed and they had to stay home. There was a palatable sense of panic as people wondered how they would pay their rent or other bills or buy groceries. Employment insurance would not work for most and many people needed the help right away. Almost overnight, Government leaders and staff set aside party politics and worked together to create the Canada Emergency Response Benefit Program, or CERB as it's known. You may recognize it more by the numbers. It's the $2,000 a month program for people who had to stop working for reasons directly related to COVID-19. One of the things that makes it so unusual and controversial is the government's decision to use what I would call a wheat and weeds approach. You see, to ensure that people could receive their payment quickly, the application is basically on the honor system. Rather than a lengthy interview process and numerous verifications, service paid to anyone who states that they qualify by simply applying. There is almost no screening so nearly every application receives approval. You may also remember that also um, kind of right away, immediately, people were upset. There were many questions about the lack of scrutiny and financial controls for this uh, mixed field of applicants. What about those who are not really eligible but end up getting the money anyway? What are we gonna do about that? Or how will you root out the falsified applications? What's to prevent people from lying? Or what kind of punishment will there be for those who take advantage of the system? Patiently, calmly, and in a way that made it evident that they had already considered most of these questions, our government indicated that they had decided to err on the side of grace. They would trust that in time, things would be sorted out. What was needed most now was to ensure that those who needed the funding would have it and have it quickly. I never imagined that there would be a day that I would be comparing the actions of our politicians to the wise and gracious and patient farmer in this parable. Our story in this pandemic and with our government is not a perfect fit, but it's close enough. It is a glimpse of the way that God is at work in our world, in the places and the people where we least expect God to be. This parable might sound like judgment, but it is really all about grace, all about the incredible patience of God made known to us most fully in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.